something let's see Let's. So hello everyone, uh, this is uh, chapter 11, uh, extending no the normal regression model. And uh, for, for this chapter, we have a look at this, how um, uh, extending the normal regression model uh, with Bayesian uh, techniques. And um, then we are going to see how to uh, utilize uh, categorical predictors and when in case of more than one predictors. Uh, and then we see some interaction terms. Um, uh, and finally, we do a bit of like model evaluation and comparison. We, uh, I'm not sure if uh, we'll be able to, to do the, the, the whole chapter today. So, but. Um, we start having um, a quick look at it. So um, when uh, we so we have already seen about uh, uh, Bayesian um, uh, linear regression. Uh, uh, we have uh, done like evaluation of regression models and even simple normal regression. So this is the third chapter. So we now be going forward. Uh, on the things, and um, uh, we have seen some uh, analysis on the weather of Australia, and um, so what, what some information about the afternoon and the morning, and uh, um, and about uh, uh, what on average and on average day in Australia, how what is the typical afternoon temperature, which would be about between 15 and 35 degrees Celsius, okay? So um, we want to have a look at this uh, um, um, weekly information and to, to set up a prior and uh, to go through uh, our analysis. Okay, so uh, le let's uh, um, uh, have a look at the um, uh, the code. So if we um, get into R, so don't need to share. Oh, uh, maybe before that. Um, I need to open up my R. And uh, and uh, Okay, so we um, so, uh, and then uh, we will have a look at this um, things here, like so. Okay. Going back to where we were, and there we go. So here we have, uh, as I said, we have the uh, we are looking at extending um, the normal uh, regression model, and uh, we use the Australia weather data. Uh, hope you can see. C uh, can you give me uh, a shout? To if you can, you see my screen, my R, all good? Yes, I could see your screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we load our packages, bias rules, R stand arm. Uh, bias plot, tidy diverse, broom mixed, and tidy bias. Okay, let's 
Like this. So let's have a look at this uh, data that we got. So whether in um, Australia, so here we have some, some location, mean temperature, max temperature, rainfall, wind, gust, direction, wind gust speed, uh, wind direction at 9 a.m., uh, 3 p.m., uh, wind speed at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Then we have humidity, uh, 3 p.m. pressure, a.m. and 3 p.m. So temperature, a.m. 3 p.m. And rain today, uh, risk minimum, uh, so millimeters. Uh, rain tomorrow, year, months, and day of the year. So quite interesting, uh, that is that. Um, if we group, uh, let's have a look um, at uh, how many locations we got in this. Uh, here we got just two locations, Ululu, Uluru uh, and Wulwong. Wulwong. So if we group by location and then we tally, uh, we see but if we can do it by using count. Um, okay. Let's have a look what do we do there. So um, as I said, we want to uh, have a quick look at what is happening, uh, what's happening in uh, within the weather. Uh, in particular, we are interested in the wind speed, the humidity, pressure, and uh, and how the temperature changes within uh, 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So basically, the wind speed, humidity, and pressure are all just select at 9 a.m. Uh, where we have temperature at um, 9 a.m. Uh, 3 p.m. Let me have a look at this. Um, so this is our data. Uh, the analysis starts with a simple normal regression model of the temperature at 3 p.m. with uh, one uh, quantitative predictor. So we want to see how things changes. So we have this uh, like um, image uh, of the uh, weather situation at 9 a.m. Um, at 9 a.m. And then we like to attempt, so like a prediction of what the temperature would be at 3 p.m. Okay, so quite interesting um, analysis. Uh, first things we do like a bit of uh, that exploration. And um, so, between the two uh, temperature. Um, so uh, the temperature at 9 a.m. and at 3 p.m. What we notice immediately is that there is like uh, an increase in, um, so basically there is a linear relationship within the temperature uh, at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And um, the more the temperature is uh, high, higher uh, early in the morning, it's expected to, um, what, what do you think? So it's, um, uh, I think it, they few, um, so like if, if at 9 a.m. is 30, 
they we have fewer uh, higher temperature at 3 p.m. So we're supposed to like have a um, it's uh, I mean it's more likely uh, that the temperature stays uh, under uh, 30 degrees. So it's, this is not um, they not degrees. I think as they are Celsius. Um, yeah. So they are. Uh, we are interested in so because the temperature typical in the afternoon is between 15 and 35. So uh, typical afternoon temperature is somewhere between 15 and 35 Celsius degree. And um, so within this first exploratory uh, uh, analysis, we see that in fact, uh, so the, the, the majority of, so here we, it's like more populated than, than uh, this size here. So we expect like to have uh, a bit of variation, uh, larger variation uh, within this area where when the temperature is lower in the morning, uh, so we expect that in the afternoon, um, like if we like, if we set like a point here, so we have like 20 Celsius degree and very early in the morning. In the afternoon, it's quite, they, it, it can be uh, quite varied. So there is a uh, but uh, in uh, the overall trend is a linear trend. So there is expected to be a linear relationship, um, positive linear relationship between uh, the temperature in the morning and the temperature in the afternoon. So uh, let's, let's uh, think about a model. Uh, obviously, so um, as I said, we start with a simple normal regression model. And uh, we have uh, um, our uh, response variable, which is temperature at 3 p.m. Uh, and uh, so we say that. Uh, the uh, variation, uh, and so um, is expected to um, behave normally. But now let's have a look at something that it's more like interesting, okay? So setting a prior and to set a prior. So this will be our model. Okay, so we, we like to estimate our uh, temperature at 3 p.m. Uh, by finding the value, uh, the closest values to the original uh, composition of the, the beta zero and beta one. So the slope and the intercept. Um, but as we, so the last week, so we, we have we already been through these things. And so when we, uh, we use this centered value um, for beta zero, and uh, so this centered intercept uh, reflects our prior understanding. Um, and it is based on, on the average of the afternoon temperature on a typical day. And we know that this will be uh, on a range between uh, 15 and 35. So we set this uh, as uh, in, in important information. So if we do uh, like 
15 plus 35. Okay, divided by two. We have 25. So this 25 uh, will be used as a as a mean average. So as the as a, as an average uh, value, and so for our uh, normal distribution in our um, for our um, parameter. So um, so basically, we will have like our uh beta um centered uh to be um no um uh to be like uh, uh, normal uh with uh, a mean of 25 and uh, a standard uh, a variance or a standard deviation of um, uh, 25. Yeah. So this is quite uh, clear. Yes, otherwise I, I could uh, like take the, this uh, temperature column and consider the uh, mean value if I do if I take um, this and I do like the mean this oops and the temperature ppm this is 24.5 okay but based on my on the assumption, so what I know about the phenomenon, so I can set this value, which is not twenty four point five or twenty four point six, but twenty five. Okay, so now uh, I need to think about the um, so I uh, talked about the intercept, and now I'm, I need to think about the the slope. Uh, and uh, the variation, so the residuals. Uh, again, um, uh, these are hypotheses that we set as a um, base uh, line um, to start with. Okay, so our beta one. Uh, and um, uh, sigma are autoscaled by some GLM. And this means that we want to, this is done to reflect uh, our lack of prior information about Australia weather, as well uh, as reasonable ranges for this parameter based on the simple scales of our temperature data. So uh, we set our beta one to be, let's take this. Uh, we set uh, our beta one to be uh, to have mean zero. and uh, standard deviation uh, 3.1. Okay. And this is based because our um, beta one is based on the temperature at 9 a.m. Okay. So if I do take this, and she slept as a 9 a.m. See that this is 20. Uh, 
אז, אז מין. And so... We... But, but instead, but we consider that our normal prior is centered at, uh, around zero. And um, that the temperature might be positive or negative or non-existent. Okay. And there would be a variation. If I do this. Variation of six with the standard deviations. So these are the information that we we've got. We have some information about the temperature in the afternoon, but we want to like see if we can predict them. So, and what? How do we do that? We use the Stan GLM model. Okay, so we use this uh, Stan GLM. Uh, we can even have, uh, uh, we already use this, uh, basically it's a general linear model, but um, so with the Bayesian assumptions, so we set uh, a prior for the intercept and uh, a prior for uh, the slope and, uh, and a prior for, um, so we, we basically set a starting point. And then we replicate this based on this um, starting point assumptions. This, uh, this is the, this, the variation, okay. Uh, Right, so in the Stan GLM, uh, would you like to have a look at the... Stan GLM. Okay, this is, uh, we, we already use it, we know what is it, but... but um, what it is, but uh, we're just going back to please have a look, just to remind ourselves, Bayesian generalized linear models, and uh, there is option prior distribution for coefficients, intercepts, and uh, other parameters. In this case, uh, so we use the sigma. Um, as you can see, so the default um, option, uh, so the basically starting points are those ones that we are, that we are using uh, in, in the chapter. Um, let's see if there's some uh, extra information in the details. So the function is similar to GLM, but uh, this what does it's performing a maximum likelihood esti uh, estimation of generalized linear models. Full Bayesian estimation is performed. Uh, so, uh, and then you have options such as sampling or with uh, Monte Carlo simulations. The Bayesian model adds uh, priors that can be chosen by you. And it is also possible to call uh, the latter directly. So you can specify the family. And so the, the link functions. Okay, so going back to uh, our data. Yeah, this is uh, what, what's happened here. So we use the the, the the prior and some other information. So let, let's take this. Okay. 
so we have uh, uh, let's run this model. Uh, what's inside this model is data, family Gaussian, our prior uh, intercept, our co prior coefficients, and we use the auto scale, and then the sigma set on uh, uh, exponential prior. So this is um, uh, the result of, of the model. There is a gradient evaluation and things. Let's see what the model specifications um, are, and we know about that. And then let's have a look at the diagnostics. So what's happened here? is that this is the intercept, the tempest, and the sigma. So we see that they are quite uh, similar. Let's see the uh, density. And uh, we can see the density and they um, you know, follow a normal distribution. And then here we can see, here we can see that the, the lag, uh, where the auto correlation, given by the auto correlation and so here we have the autocorrelation, the lag, and the autocorrelation. So what changes if we shift uh, uh, within periods? And then, so what we see is it a bit like um, same behavior uh, within one, two, three, four. Uh, autocorrelation lines. But that, and then let's have a look at the, the ratio. So we estimate uh, an intercept of about one, the temperature 9 a.m. Uh, it's positive, and we have a sigma which is positive as well. It's supposed to grow, okay? So as we we saw on the, it's a linear, a growing linear relationship. And the same things is with our hat. So we explain um, like, uh, let's have a look at what we say. So the, sim the simulation um, says somewhere, uh, the average increase in temperature is somewhere between uh, 0.98 and 1.1 degree. And uh, so there is a credible interval and everything. So if we run uh, the posterior interval function, we can see that. Um, so the, the, they are um, or so between uh, one and 1.1. And so an 80% possible probability that for every one degree increase, there is an increase in temperature somewhere. And so we, we saw that, so that, that was clear. Um, if we had a job move, we can see, so there is a, a growing relationship if we do method and um, so we can see that we can like grab all the information with a centered line. Um, 
And so uh, let's have a look with the uh, Monte Carlo simulations, what's happened uh, with this, the PP uh, check function uh, in use in the model. So we now simulating a certain number of times. So this is our uh, starting point, basically. And these are the deviations. So we can see that, uh, so the, there is, um, this is a B model. So we don't grab the B model or almost all, all, all the times. So somehow here, yeah, there is a quite sort of replication of the, the behavior of the, uh, the density, but um, in general, so it behaves normally. Okay, so sets of temperature alongside the actual observed temperature data. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any questions? Maybe. Uh, no, no questions right now. Thank you. Right. So let let's uh, now going going forward and see what's happened if we then um, um, make a difference looking at, uh, so we can even see it here, but maybe we can see it better. Okay, so basically we now feel um, the, the, this is the same, um, so we, just, we do the density, but we now group it uh, by location. So we have the two densities for uh, probabilities, for the, the trend of the uh, temperature, uh, for Uluru and uh, Wolwang. So we can see that there is a quite difference within the two locations. So one, it's like um, um, there is a higher peak and lower variation, while the other one, it's uh, like sort of B model, but uh, there's more, vi more variation and the probability it's lower in general. Um, so, this would be a, a, a categorical predictor variable. So because we set this on to uh, be differentiated by location. And uh, what's happened if we build a model uh, to attempt to um, identify the temperature in the afternoon, the level of the temperature in the afternoon, but based on the location. So our uh, basic, basically coefficients are now uh, B model and it will be categorical and will be one if Wolo Wong is the location and zero otherwise, so Uluru. Uh, based on, on this information, our uh, beta one, so the coefficients for uh, the predictor, changes so it's now 38 square um it's centered it is centered on zero but he uses 38 uh what now if we what if we do uh, Okay. Location. Uh, 
temperature. Okay. Let's go the opposite. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, like the, there is a big difference between the two. And so we saw this at the very beginning of the day when we the count, no? So because now we are talking about temperature, so we like to see, uh, so the temperature in Wollongong is lower in general than the temperature in Uluru. And um, okay, so I'm now to like, this is 38. Okay, so the 38 is the temperature. What if we do, uh, so this is um, the value. Okay, again, we have, uh, uh, we know that the temperature is between 15 and 35, but now based on location, if I do this, I group by location, And uh, um, group by location, and then take the temperature. So this is the average temperature for, uh, at 3 p.m. This is what, what I need because I don't need the other one um, because I use it by location. So And I have the variation, which is six and three, but I use 30, I'm, I'm not sure what it's, uh, okay. Well, anyway, um, so again, so the deviation represents the variability, and here is again considered as an exponential, but now uh, with, 0 0.13 um, as a parameter. And so we now simulating uh, the model with uh, stand GLM. Uh, we now use the temperature uh, on location. Use now the temperature on location. We have the family Gaussian. Um, the the prior it stays the same. What changes are those these two? So we have now two point five Why two point five? On exponential one, it's okay. Let's run this uh, model. Uh, 
and add the brain the size of the mother. You can see uh, what's happening. So the weather is again the same as, as we saw before, the density. Uh, I can grab the difference so up front and so I don't see much difference. Okay. So the density plot and the below numerical posterior summary is for beta zero and beta one reflect our posterior understanding, temperature in the two location, and um, So they are around 10.3 degrees lower in Wolo Wong in general. And so if we tidy the model, uh -oh. So, uh, so we can see the two the difference within these two values has to be uh, so as we can see the difference and so the location uh, the estimation for uh, Wall of Wong location it's uh, negative so it's decreasing uh, and so the other one, um, so it's lower uh, than for Uluru. Uh, I think that this is uh, all we can do this this week. Um, and um, so in here. Uh, with this plot, with this visualization, um, we can see clearly that uh, Wolo Wong is um, expected to be uh, with a lower temperature in the afternoon compared to Uluru, which is expected to be uh, higher. So next uh, next week we we start from utilizing two predictors and we finish the chapter with another two. Do you have any questions? Maybe uh, we'd like to discuss about anything about this uh, few things that we saw. Uh, no, no questions. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, and like you said, well, continuous. Um, section eleven point two and onwards next week, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye. Mm -hmm.